Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays of Binding of Isaac Adderith. Plus two, 44 wins in a row, and the last one was like, ooh, <laughs> not great. This one, on the other hand, started with a great rate of fire, 2360-69-FY. Um, a great rate of fire, a great spacebar item, weird HP, three spirit hearts only, and without a doubt, the uh, to the best of my knowledge, the worst range I have ever seen to start a run with. Uh, I will say that the reason our range is bad is the same reason our rate of fire is good. It's number one. So this is just what, what number one's gonna do for you. We gotta be a little cautious, because HP is, is very spicy, um, without a doubt. But we're also on an XL floor. So this run is, is gonna get clarified pretty quickly. <laughs> It's gonna... It's either gonna get very, very spicy, or it's... It, I think it's very easily as well could just find itself completely sorted uh, based on, you know, how this deal with the devil works for us. Some real danger, though. Early, you know? Like, we can't get close to these guys, which is... A problem because we have to. <laughs> Sack dagger is incredible. Kidney stone. I, I really just think that this item, quite frankly, this item's existence offends me. I'll say it. I'm not afraid to say it. Uh, I think that it needs to have the speed downgrade removed from it in order for it to be not insulting. How's that? How's that for a uh, an unequivocal statement? Is that how that word works? Something along those lines. Anyway, sack dagger is is incredible. And not really that much of a disadvantage when you consider our range to begin with is so bad. But it's just like, come on, you want me to pick that up? I'm not picking that up. It's it's bad in multiple ways. Troll bomb, maybe? Oh! Big brain. He saved, uh, he saved a single bomb. That was incredible to me. All right, so here's how we're going to do this, all right? We're going to go to the cursed room. We're going to see what's up. We're... Probably going to use our Emperor card to get out without losing that second half spirit hard. Oh, baby! It's weird. Um, okay, so here's the play. Never mind, I thought that was Spirit of the Night. I do not know the play. I think... You take Ma of the Void. Leave... And Emperor... Hit the space bar to keep yourself safe, and you hope for any form of HP, which is, you know, what just happened. And then, so the other one is, oh, I didn't even see it in there. The other one is Whore of Babylon. Um, Whore of Babylon is, is a bit of a stretch, for sure. I think you definitely just want that. Um, Whore of Babylon's a bit of a stretch, but if we get one red heart, it, it might be worth turning that red heart into Whore of Babylon. It's, it's close-ish, I think. <laughs> I don't think it's worth three of our, you know, four and a half spirit hearts. That, that's for certain. But I do think it could be worth our one red heart and keeping our four and a half, uh, spirit hearts alive. All right, well, we don't have to worry about it then. Let's just head down to the next floor. We definitely improved our position, but we need um, we need a, quite a lot more, to be honest. Okay, that explosion is mighty helpful. We're really, this whole floor, our, our existence for the next maybe several floors, pretty much just revolves around making sure we're using Ma the Void. Because if we get every single demon heart we get, probably at this point raises our odds of winning by like 1%. Might seem minor, but if you stack together, you know, like 8 or 9 of those, we're, we're moving the needle in a big way pretty early on here. But I, I feel very good about this run. I would feel better with a little bit of an HP buffer, but I feel, I feel very, very solid at least. Still Wednesday, by the way. Again, uh, okay. I was very pleased that I had the the time to uh, get a nice little Isaac 
marathon session going. Oh, well, three runs might not be much of a marathon, but, you know, it, it, it just feels nicer to be in the groove than to be doing, like, one video, no videos. One video, no videos, you know? For Isaac, specifically. I, I don't have too many days where I do no videos. <laughs> Even on, on my day off, I recorded a video this week, but that's just because, come on. It's not every day that, uh... Oh, come on, dude. Come on. It's not every day that Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Favorites comes out. You gotta, you gotta give it the respect it deserves. Figured it was worth checking there. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a pretty low-key sort of week. We did have a, we had a tele-medical appointment with our, with our obstetrician, which is, you know, like a uh, baby doctor who handles stuff uh, prenatally. Pretty simple. Basically, I'm, I'm not trying to downplay the role of the obstetrician, but it seems like, you know, if everything is kind of going according to plan, the role of the obstetrician is basically to be like an administrative assistant to you. First, they answer your questions, which of course is very important, because like, I don't know, you know, what's normal, <laughs> what's not normal in this circumstance. Um, but secondarily, a lot of it is like, don't forget, you got that glucose test coming up. Don't forget, you know, you go, now you gotta get... Oh, why would I use that? I thought it was Guppy's head for some reason. <laughs> you know, you gotta get uh, the, the prenatal vaccination for pertussis. And I, thank you, thank you. I'll get to it. I'll, well, it's, you know, we're not rude about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing up the joke that... Uh, essentially, the obstetrician is kind of like your... Your secretary. <laughs> and it's weird, you know, it was kind of... I'm, I'm getting used to this uh, telemedical stuff. At first, I was like, maybe this is unfair. You know, I, I trust the professionals in this situation, and I'm, I'm not going to go to the curse room here. I'm just immediately, I think, going to use the Joker card to get some extra momentum. Oh my god, we love them both. But I think we love this one a little bit more. Um, but originally, I was kind of like, if you can do the appointment over the phone, how important can the appointment be in the first place? But now I'm realizing that that's probably, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I should say, not probably, coming from a place of extreme ignorance and really says something about my own personality where I'm like, I think I know better than this person even though I've never worked a, a day in their field in my life and stream video games for a living. Help me! Come on, just give me a demon heart, dude. I mean, we're not too pressed here, but like, we're, we could be, I mean, this is a wonderful room for... Ma of the Void, but I don't think it's going to come to fruition for us, brother. Anyway, now I'm realizing, dude, it's like going to the doctor. But all the worst parts about a routine trip to the doctor, commuting, hey, we're here for the doctor's appointment, you know, all that stuff has been stripped away. And all that's left is like, instead of sitting in a waiting room, waiting for the doctor, we're just sitting like... You know, in our living room with our phone. It is a video call, but like, you know, waiting for the doctor. So it's much better in the sense of like convenience. Now, of course, makes it a little harder for them to take your blood pressure. <laughs> but otherwise, it's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of positives. And moreover, I'm like, eh, you know, what does it say about me if I complain about it in a situation like this? Our free medical care is by phone now. It's more convenient, but, you know, it doesn't say, it doesn't say good things about me, I guess, is why I've started to change my opinion on it. That's, that's good, you know. Better to change your opinion on it than just change your opinion about yourself, I suppose. I'm stretching for anecdotes here, because again, like, a pretty dry time. You want to talk some more about the, the Netflix program Dark? <laughs> it's really good. It's a good show. Alright, the speed is worth something. Uh, we haven't been to our item room yet. I will say I didn't expect this to happen. But I do regret uh, using our Joker card too early. And really, anybody could have seen it coming, to be fair. Uh, it just felt like a secret room to me. Um, 
But we really, we're missing out on Rod and Baby because of my, uh, my lack of patience there. I'll live with it, but, you know, it, it does hurt me a little bit. We still got an incredible run, but... And I am feeling in the groove. I really feel like, I mean, I'm not, I'll be 100% honest with you. At this point, I'm not too worried about, like, backlash for Isaac play in the Isaac comments. It happens from time to time. There's, there's people that watch that are like, you know, I like the banter, but I'd also love to see perfect but also zany plays. And I respect that. You know, everybody wants to have it all, you know. I want my favorite restaurant to be delicious and also be healthy and also be cheap and also be open 24 hours and have a location that's opened up like right next to where I live. You know, it's not realistic, but of course I want it. I'll eat like a delicious meal and be like, ah, but I, if only it was four dollars cheaper <laughs> this would have been perfect um but at this point i i really do take i i don't take the audience for granted which you should be you know well noted by the fact that i have uploaded every single day in the isaac series for like eight years or something stupid um but i do uh i kind of do take the position right now that if you're watching you're pretty locked in you're a fan so i don't think we're gonna rattle people too much by like our unzany play in the last episode, but I even still want to go a step to defend myself and say that I genuinely, unless I'm missing out on like maybe there was an amazing synergy that I wasn't uh, privy to, barring that situation that could have happened, but I don't think it did. Barring that, um, I really think that. Our conservative play is what got us the win in the last episode. I think we were remarkably close to the incredibly rare feat of losing with Tech X. And we played maybe like a 6 out of 10 game. That's that's my analysis of myself right now. But like to lose with Tech X would be that's the sort of thing that's hard to recover from. <laughs> Even if it is your first loss, in, first loss in a month and a half. Uh, the D8s. I really, to be honest with you, I'm quite content with where our stats sit right now. I feel very little compulsion to really take it to the... Oh, why? You know, let's call it a 5 out of 10 then. Um, very little compulsion to uh, to mess with it. We got a pretty good thing going here. Like, we already had a good thing going here. I was just checking for a Tinted Rock. Um, but then to, to combine that with, uh, like, Booger Tears, the damage potential is quite good. Maybe I shouldn't be taking pills, but, you know. Old dog can't learn new tricks. I'll also tell you, like, Shears is really good. But Mr. Me can also be... Valuable and this is not a meme pickup. You might think this is a meme pickup. I very much disagree I think uh, mr. Me is kind of like having a bad coupon But a bad coupon is still pretty good for deals with the devil and we got no red hearts So being able to get these deals with the devil <sighs> Cheaply is is not worth everything to me, but it's worth something to me Come on come on come on Come on, come on. There we go. Baited. I did think maybe we could get him to blow up those skulls. But yeah, in contrast to our last run, we didn't get hit. That's that's a great wake-up call. We should slow down. And maybe stop taking pills. <laughs> oh, oh my. Of, of all the habits, the, the pill habit in Isaac is like... Look, I'll tell you, I, I know that this is a meme at this point. I really do like surprise mechanics in games. I'm not a, a real-life gambler at all, basically. I mean, I have gambled, but, like, I don't... You know, I, I don't get... Like, food, I get enjoyment out of. A good whiskey, I get enjoyment out of. Gambling, I mostly just find, like, eh, I take it or leave it, you know? It's, it's a vice I don't really understand. Um, although, of course, I understand that it exists. Um... But, like, in games, when you take the monetization element out of it, having, like, three question marks attached to something, it could be good, but it also could be bad, it tickles my fancy. I gotta admit. Like, if... 
EA and 2K reworked, not that they have to because they're obviously, especially 2K is like making money hand over fist, but um, if they reworked their sports games so that they were, let's just see what we got, oh dude, so good. If they reworked their sports games so they maintained the loot box mechanic without being unbelievably uh, predatory from a monetization aspect, I would be way more into them. But of course, you know, I'm not going to say that's never going to happen, but it, it probably won't happen without, like, outside legislation. <laughs> so I'll, it, it's very hard to get me to not take the pill. And by the way, you might say, well, you took Mr. Me, but then you didn't do anything with him. But it was just, like, one of the rare situations where I think we actually benefit from... Well, let me put it this way. It's better to have the charge, because using Mr. Me to get Abaddon for free doesn't do anything. You still lose all of your uh, red hearts on pickup, um, but yeah, this, this seems this seems very steady right now, very steady indeed. Yeah, but you didn't take kidney stone. I'm making that. Nobody's gonna be mad. You do. Hey, it's me, person who doesn't exist, whose favorite item in Isaac is kidney stone. What can I say? I just like the way it makes you blink sometimes. No, nobody's nobody's saying that. Come on, man. Come on, Jack. Sure. Uh, okay, you, you got a valid point. If you got Mr. Me, you really should use it. The money is unlikely to be worth anything for us in the future. But Mr. Me just taking up a spot in our... Uh, I mean, we gave up shears for this item. We gotta, we gotta give it his due day on the catwalk. Uh, absolutely not. Now, there are people who Isaac's heart is their favorite item. So, to those people, I say I'm sorry. But also, you should be used to it by now. <laughs> no, not Clicker. No, not Loki's horns. Yes, Capricorn. Okay. Mm Dude, I'm feeling like... I'm feeling good at Isaac right now. It helps when you get incredible items, but I'm really, I'm feeling like... If you polled my confidence level right now, and you were like, what are the odds that you get to a 100 streak? I would answer your question by saying 100. We will take it if... Well, whether or not we get it for free, we're taking it. Let's go. And, I mean... There's really no reason not to. I, I hate to say because Mr. Me did almost nothing for us, but there's really no reason not to take it. It's just, it, it guarantees us the win. Like, I, I feel like um, there's got to be a good example in here. You know, like that year in the Premier League when uh, Chelsea just dominated? Must have been like like 2009, 2010. Or maybe 2010, 2011. Um, that's basically what I feel like right now. Even when I'm going up against uh, Arsenal, when they still had Fernando Torres, even when I'm going up against you know a Wayne Rooney-led Manchester United squad and Carlos Tevez and Vincent Company. On Manchester City, I know you, and I'll keep going. You you know more. You know more. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, on uh, Steven Gerrard on Liverpool, of course, everybody remembers him. I know some soccer players. Okay, I I'll have you know, I did watch uh, maybe two years of Premier League play. I got I got really into soccer. I dude, if you. Here's the thing. I, I propose a Canada-Europe alliance of sports. America has too much cultural power. We need to slow them down. Basketball, baseball, American football. You know, baseball catches some flack, but like the other ones are very extremely popular, of course. They, they look down on hockey and they look down on soccer. I think it's because when you score in hockey and soccer, 
we do something insane, it counts for one point. It's like, what are you doing? You're supposed to make it count for six points. And then if they um, are capable of doing a, uh, a backflip afterwards, they get plus one point. And if they do a front flip, they get plus two points. But if they kick the ball through the goal, you get six points times uh, the number of days it's been since the winter solstice. Uh, anyway, I'm making it. football scoring is not that difficult to be honest, but uh, We need to form an alliance with one another Soccer is not boring and hockey is not boring You just need to have a little bit of patience because and I'm not really talking smack about basketball That was that thing was stuck to me. It was sealed to me It but you know in basketball They score Every 3.1 seconds, you know? God, I hate this curse. In soccer, there's a... I mean, here's... Can I tell you the principal problem? And I'm not saying this is just an American thing. It's definitely a Canadian thing as well. They removed ties from the NHL, uh, you know, 15 years ago. But I really think that... North Americans are fundamentally opposed to the idea of a draw. They always quote uh, Bad News Bears, where Billy Bob Thornton and Walter Matthau's character says, A tie? Everybody loses in a tie. It's like kissing your sister. You recognize in that movie, um, the coach of the children's baseball team is not meant to be a font of wisdom. He is instead living quite a, 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 a sad life, quite frankly. And also might not be considered a paragon of knowledge. I, I think, dude, a draw is very satisfying for me. Now, I will say, a 0-0 zero, zero draw in soccer is pretty not great. That, I'm not saying, maybe I'm just not at the level where I can appreciate the beauty in that. But... A 0-0 zero, zero draw is pretty bad. But you know, like, what's... I, I, think, I feel it's hard to explain. I don't know if there's another sport out there where scoring one or allowing one goal changes the odds of a given outcome more than it does in soccer. You know what I mean? Like, in every event has so much weight because they're a little bit less frequent. Like, if I'm watching a Canucks game and they get scored on twice, in my head I'm like, okay, statistically we're probably going to lose this one. But what, it's probably like, you know, maybe we got a 20% chance to come back. It happens all the time. Um, if you're watching a, a, a soccer game and your team goes down, you know, 2-0, you're like, this is a disaster. But it also means, you know, when you get that goal in the 44th minute just before halftime, and then you get another one in, like, the 63rd minute, you're like, oh my god, this is a magical moment. Like, everything just has a little bit more weight. And also, like, the other thing about soccer is that I think it's just the most naturally, like, beautiful major sport. You know? When somebody sends, like, a, when, when things are, like, steady, and then somebody gets a cheeky through ball that sends somebody on a run, it's a beautiful thing. Or like, uh, you know, a, a perfectly placed free kick that just curves so elegantly around, uh, you know, the wall. That's great stuff. Even when there's not high scoring, there's always like beautiful plays like that to see. Now, I, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. The most frustrating part of watching soccer, and admittedly I haven't watched too much in the past few years, but... I mean, I was really thinking about starting to get into the Whitecaps, but then, uh, which is our MLS team in Vancouver. But then, you know, the pandemic stuff, and then also, uh, we're having a child soon. It's not a, it's not a good time to be a two-sport guy. <laughs> but um, the, the worst part is the, the flopping. You know it. I know it. I'm not like if you if the flopping makes it so you don't want to watch the sport it is what it is i think that's short-sighted every sport's got negative stuff like if you don't like flopping in soccer but you love watching the nfl where there's like you know 80 percent ads versus 20 percent play i think you got to recognize that there's not hypocrisy but room for criticism on both sides you know in the end you like what you like it is it is frustrating to see someone you know Especially in like elimination games in the World Cup, your team's up by one. 
Somebody pats you on the back gently. You fall over. You roll around on the ground for eight minutes. They get the stretcher. They pull you off on the stretcher. And then as soon as the stretcher uh, sets you free, you're like, oh, I actually feel great now. I'm going to get back on the pitch. Like, that stuff is insane. But hopefully, hopefully one day they find a way to wean that out. Because, I mean, I'll admit, that is the most, almost, I'd say, objectively frustrating part. I don't know. The, the complaints about hockey, I'll admit, they just fall on kind of deaf ears for me. When people are like, it's boring to watch, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's hard to follow? It's a black disc on white ice. You watch a, a brown oval sail through the air against a brown and green field, and you're like, oh, look at that, and look at that. It's, per it's a perfect spiral. A black disc on white ice is too much for you? I don't understand. But anyway, all I was saying, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta form an alliance. Divided, the Americans make fun of both of us and face too little resistance to ever have introspection about it. United! Well, I will say as well, if you're like a, a soccer fan, you're probably like, why would I have to ally with hockey? We're already the biggest sport in the world. Okay, you're right, but like, you know, we could we could accomplish great things together. <laughs> it's not about what sport's bigger. Your, your sport is obviously the managing partner here. I mean, the World Cup of Hockey is... Even hockey fans are like, eh, you know, it's not really that big of a deal. That's all I have to say. I've officially tapped myself out of, uh, of Isaac stuff to talk about here. Which is actually fantastic news. First off, because this is uh, the last Isaac video of the day, although my workday is still really just getting started. Um... But we, we had great performances today. Had wonderful performances. Um, that were perhaps... You know, here's what I'll say. We played the runs that we got over the last three. Maybe we didn't have super zany ones. but And, and maybe we got a couple of items that were significantly overpowered early on. But we played the runs we were dealt. And, uh, and it worked. We got the job done. At the end of the day, it's like we're, I tell Malf in baseball, you know? Strikeouts are nice, but, you know, if you can get the batter to pop fly to center field, that's just as good as a strikeout. These might not be incredible, bombastic, unlikely wins, but they still count for one in the scoreboard, huh? Hey, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. It's the single best way you can help me out as a content creator if you watch a lot of my stuff. Apart from that, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Tomorrow. See you.